So in the first part of chapter 11, we talked about, briefly introduced the um, conscious relay pathways, the divergent pathways, and the non-conscious relay pathways. And so in this part and the next part, we're going um, to talk to talk about them in more detail and the individual spinal tracts that run in those pathways. So I want you to be able to start where a state where each of the specific sensory tracts the dorsal column medial lemniscus that's the only one that doesn't really tell you where it goes to and from um, the spinal thalamic spinal mesencephalic spinal emotional and spinal cerebellar tracts start and end and what type of information is in, uh, transmitted in each track and what part of the brain does the sensation have to travel to for crude awareness where we talked about it the executive system of the brain the thalamus um, I want you to be able to describe the three steps in the sensation experience. So we talked about that in the last section, um, encoding the information in the sensory receptors, um, transmitting the information to the dorsal root ganglion, um, and then projecting that information up to the thalamus in the brain. Um, I want you to know the difference between discriminative touch and conscious proprioception. And I want you to be able to compare spinothalamic pain to spinolimbic pain in terms of speed, localization, and quality of pain. Which of them travels faster and why? So the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathways. Um, the dorsal column, this is another one of those things like the sciatic nerve where you're, the sciatic nerve is running down and as soon as it crosses the knee, um, it turns into the tibial nerve. Remember that from kinesiology? So you're still on the same road, but the road has changed names. It's very Bellingham. Um, that <laughs> happens a lot in Bellingham. You're driving along on Elm Street, and all of a sudden it's northwest, and you didn't ever turn or anything. So you're driving along on the dorsal column, and all of a sudden when you get to the brain stem, it turns into the medial lemniscus. So that's why they call it the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway, or you could call it for short the DCML if you get tired of typing out dorsal column medial meniscus. So these are the pathways for discriminative light touch and conscious proprioception. They use a three neuron relay in the dorsal column medial lemniscus, I can't say it, medial lemniscus tract. Um, so the primary um, neuron conveys information from the receptors to the medulla. So remember it's that pseudo unipolar neuron, it has two axons. The one axon is the peripheral receptor. The other one goes from the dorsal root ganglion to the medulla. Um, when, you, when you get to the medulla, it turns into the medial lemniscus. The secondary neuron goes from the medulla to the thalamus. The tertiary neuron conveys information from the thalamus to the cerebral cortex. So that's our three neuron relay. The dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway um, conveys information about fine touch and conscious proprioception, and it crosses over to the contralateral side of the body in the medulla. So that crossover is called a decusation or decusation, um, and the tracks actually cross over. So the information coming from the left side of the body, when it gets to the medulla, it crosses over to the right side of the brain. And the information coming from the right side of the body, when it gets to the medulla, it crosses over to the left side of the brain. So that's why you get the effects with a stroke, where someone has a stroke in the right side of the brain, the left side of their body is affected. When they have a stroke in the left side of the brain, the right side of their body is affected. When it comes to this type of information, um, so if they have, if you have a spinal cord injury, um, unless it's uh, well, if you, have a, if you have a spinal cord injury, um, the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathways aren't affected except below the level of the lesion, um, but the crossover doesn't make any difference on a spinal um, injury. When we start to talk about motor tracts, you'll see that the cro it crosses over in a different place, and um, it does make a difference. So the, the whole point of that is knowing where you're losing sensation with a lesion in um, some place in the cerebral cortex. So if you have um, a lesion in the right side of your um, parietal lobe, you're going to have sensory loss on the left side of the body. So 
light touch is the localization of touch and vibration and the ability to discriminate between two closely spaced points touching the skin. That's that two-point discrimination test. And that's going to depend on the receptive fields of the neurons um, that are receiving that information in the periphery. Um, so we can localize where that um, touch is. Conscious proprioception is the awareness of the movements and the relative position of body parts. So if you recall um, your tested measures lab, you did some of the proprioception testing where someone had their eyes closed and you said, am I, am I moving your arm up or down? Is your, is your finger up or down? You know, that sort of thing. So where are you in space? That's our conscious proprioception. Um, stereognosis is the ability to use touch and proprioceptive information to identify an object. The example is the key, um, getting it out of your bag without having to look at it. Or finding your lip balm, that's pretty important. Well, you know, <laughs> it depends on what your priorities are, I guess. Getting in the house or um, dry lips. So, um, the, so the dorsal column medial omniscus um, transmits those two sensations, light touch and conscious proprioce uh, proprioception, and it um, contributes to stereognosis. Um, nociception, temperature, and crude touch are carried in the anterior lateral columns. So there are two types of pathways um, that can convey um, signals in the anterior lateral column. Um, conscious relay path pathways and divergent pathways, both of those types of pathways um, ascend together in the anterolateral spinal cord, and then their paths become separate in the brain. So um, the you can think of the cranial nerves as being the peripheral nervous system of the head, and then the somatosensory uh, system is the peripheral nervous system of the rest of the body. So some of the diagrams from the book talk about the cranial nerves, and but they have a similar layout in terms of um, a three um, neuron relay. Um, and so the spinal thalamic tract in the anterolateral column um, transmits fast pain, where the trigeminal lemniscus in the um, head transmits fast pain in the head. We're not going to talk in too much detail about the cranial nerves in this class, but we're just going to touch on them. So don't worry too much about the um, cranial nerve information in this diagram, but just know that the uh, anterolateral columns are um, carrying nociception, temperature, and crude touch. And remember, crude touch can be like that tickle or itch sensation. So the signals for fast nociception travel in a conscious relay pathway. And the signals for slow nociception that reach conscious awareness travel in the spino-emotional pathway, sometimes called the spinolimic pathway, which is a divergent pathway. So the signals for fast no nociception travel in the spinothalamic pathway that goes up the anterolateral column. And it's that three neuron pathway, and it's fast and it's conscious. And so it allows us to um, discriminate exactly where the pain's coming from. Um, the, the slow um, nociception, it goes the long way. It takes the, takes the divergent route. So the spinothalamic fast way is that discriminative, discriminative fast nociception, as well as temperature and crude touch. So um, those travel in different neurons in the spinothalamic pathway. So the first order neuron brings information to the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, just like the dorsal column neurons. The axon of the second neuron crosses the midline right there. Remember, the dorsal column axons don't cross over until they get to the medulla. So the, in the spinothalamic pathway, it crosses over right there in the spinal cord, um, crosses the midline, and then projects from the spinal cord to the thalamus. Again, crude awareness. We've got the thalamus in there. The third order neuron projects from the thalamus to the cerebral cortex. So that's different from the light touch and conscious proprioception um, that we're getting in the DCML. Um, this is um, this goes crosses over to the other side of the body right away. So where you're going to see this as a difference is in spinal cord injuries because you're going to get 
one side has sensa certain sensations and the other side has other sensations. So um, kind of interesting. But the spinal thalamic tract conveys pain, temperature, and crude touch and crosses over to the contralateral side of the body in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. Um, so it doesn't wait till it gets to the midbrain. Crosses right over. So the first order neurons in the spinal thalamic pathway, um, the first order neuron, the peripheral axon, brings an impulse to the cell body in the dorsal root ganglion. For discriminative temperature information, warmth and cold are detected by specialized free nerve endings of small myelinated and less myelinated neurons. I'm not going to say unmyelinated, but um, myelinated and less myelinated neurons. For um, crude touch conveys non-light touch information. So that's that tickle and itch business that we talked about earlier. That's that crude touch. So it's still the same where the first order neuron um, has a peripheral axon that brings the impulse to the dorsal root ganglion, and, but it travels in a different column and it goes to a different place. Some of it. The second and third order neurons in the spinal thalamic pathway, the cell body of the second neuron is in the dorsal horn. So that's where the crossover comes. Um, in the, the cell body of the second neuron of the dorsal column medial lumniscus is in the medulla. So most spinal thalamic tract neurons end in a nucleus of the thalamus. The third order neurons arise in the thalamic nucleus and project to the primary and secondary sensory cortex. So localizing noxious stimuli requires information in the fast nociceptive pathway. So we talked about this a little bit in pathophysiology where um, acute pain versus chronic pain, acute pain is well localized. That means it's getting information in the spinal, from the spinothalamic pathway. Um, that's really important for localizing the pain. Um, the chronic pain, the C fibers are running in a different pathway and um, they're slower and they're less discriminative. So um, to compare the dorsal column medial lumniscus and the spinal thalamic pathways, um, spinal thalamic and dorsal column systems are anatomically similar. Um, they both have peripheral axons that um, go to the dorsal root ganglion. They both project up to the um, thalamus. But the spinal thalamic tract contains axons that transmit information about nociception, temperature, and crude touch. So these are going to be our, our um, A delta fibers. Remember those guys? Um, the functions of the dorsal column and the spinal thalamic tract are not rigidly segregated. Um, they can, there can be some shared information. But information about non-light touch travels in the anterolateral columns, and some nociception and temperature information ascends the dorsal columns. So it all has to get to the brain somehow, and there are all these different roads to take to the brain.